Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching and welcome to the English Nubung Phuc radio, television station and newspaper and following other headlines as usual. Provincial Party Leader hosts regular reception for citizens. Bình Phước preserving Camellia Japonica genes. 112 wild animals released into Buyamap National Park. Lao leader appreciates the great sacrifice by Vietnam's volunteer soldiers and experts. Vietnam will likely be among Asia's fastest growing economics next year. And now our detail. Secretary of Provincial Party Committee Nguyễn Mạnh Cường hosted a regular reception for citizens in November. Residents from Dong Suan City and Hơn Quan District voiced their concerns over land reclamation, compensation policies and resettlement plans. Mr. Cường stressed that addressing citizens' concerns must be done based on legal regulations, adding that citizens should show goodwill and local authorities should be flexible in sharing a common voice with citizens and identify solutions to long-standing issues. Regarding projects seeking in principle approval from the government, authorities at lower levels must pay due record to the legitimate rights of residents in affected areas, he said. The Provincial Science Council held a consultation meeting recently to evaluate the project on preserving and developing the generative resources of Camilla Zapotnika at Buyamab National Park, Benfuk Province. The project which sharpened the focus on the study of cinecultural characteristics, distribution, ecological characteristics, genetic diversity, and the qualitative analysis of the main groups of substances in Camellia japonica species in the national park. Scientists would dance into breeding techniques for the flowering plant and develop a one-hectare garden to collect and preserve its genetic resources. The management board of Bozam of National Park worked with the Southern Institute of Ecology and the Vietnam Academy of Forest Science to implement the project. Members of the Provincial Science Council concluded that the project is necessary to preserve precious Camellia japonica, which boasts great economic value. The Animal Rescue Conservation and Development Center at Buyamab National Park, in cooperation with the Forest Protection Department of Ho Chi Minh City and the Gu Chi Wildlife Rescue Station, released 112 wild animals from 20 endangered species into national parks. Most are endangered species listed in Group 1B in the Vietnam Red Book, including Asian small club otter, Bengal monitor, and king cobra. The animals were given proper nutrition and treatment for disease before being released back into the wild. After examining the bosom of National Park, authorities said it's an ideal natural habitat for the animals. Ladies and gentlemen, a delegation of former Vietnamese volunteer soldiers and military experts has paid a visit to Laos. Lao Pasti General Secretary and President Thong Lung Sisulis and Chairman of National Assembly Sai Son Phan Vi Hans were separate meeting with the Vietnamese delegation. At the meetings in Vientiane, Major General Huynh Dac Hương head of the liaison board of Vietnam's former volunteer experts and soldiers in Laos, stressed that the special relations between Vietnam and Laos is a brightly success of the two peoples and also unique relations in the world history. Welcoming the Vietnamese delegation, the two Lao leaders said the visit is highly meaningful amid numerous activities marking the friendship year between the two countries. They appreciated Vietnam's valuable assistance, including the great sacrifice by Vietnamese volunteer soldiers and experts, which not only helped their revolution obtain complete independence in 1975, but also contributed to the two countries' great friendship, special solidarity, and comprehensive cooperation. 
Vietnam will likely be among Asia's fastest growing economic next year, despite a weaker currency and falling foreign uh, reserves, according to a recent article published on Wall Street Journal. According to the article, after the tough years of 2020 and 2021, Vietnam spent much of 2022 in the sweet spot, still low inflation and rapid growth. Times will get a bit tougher now, but the country is poised for fast growth next year, Natixis is forecasting 6.5%, while Capital Economics expects more than 7%, and the weakening currency may help soften the blow from weaker export demand. The article assessed that the situation could get even trickier for Vietnam if the world slides into a recession. However, thanks to investments in infrastructure, aggressive trade liberalization and relatively cheap wages, its manufacturing engine remains intact. The author noted that the country has also been partly insulated from the global surge in food prices. Vietnam is on track to see a check surplus of $10 billion this year despite enduring global markets uncertainties and fluctuations according to a report by the Ministry of Trade and Industries. As of October 20th, the country's total foreign trade turnover stood at an estimated $620 billion, export are estimated at $314 billion and imports $306 billion resulting in a trade surplus of roughly $8 billion. The import-export value is likely to climb to $800 billion by the end of this year, with the trade surplus set to rise to $10 billion. Despite facing the negative impact caused by COVID-19 pandemic, Vietnam's total foreign trade turnover last year hit $668 billion, making the country one of the 20 largest economies in the world in terms of international trade. Furthermore, the effective application of e-commerce services has enabled Vietnamese commodities to reach more overseas markets. Currently, the country's e-commerce sales have fed approximately $14 billion, with the figure projected to rise up to $18 billion for the whole year. Over 6 million tons of rice worth $2.9 billion were exported in the first 10 months of 2022 of 17% in volume and 7% in value years on years, according to the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Export prices averaged $484 per ton during the period, down 8% from the same period last year. The Philippines was the biggest importer between January and September, accounting for nearly 44% of the total exports. Export revenue to Ivory Coast posted a plastic growth of 71% in nine months. Meanwhile, shipments to Ghana witnessed a sharpest fall, nearly 33%, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development said. In October alone, about 700,000 tons of rice were shipped abroad, bringing home $334 million. Export prices stood at $425 to $430 per ton, the highest since last November. Traders forecast prices may be slightly higher in the short term. Traders forecast prices may be slightly higher in the short term, and rice exports will increase this year. And that's all for today on Bình Phước Radio, Television Station and Newspaper News. Once again, thanks for watching and goodbye for now. Thank you.